Okay, guys. Whew. Just a quick check-in here. I have not yet gone and done my labs. My hair's up, though. You can tell. I'm getting ready. My hair always ends up in some outrageous messy bun if I have appointments and stuff. So, yeah, I have not yet got my labs done, but I just got off the phone with the hospital, their patient services center thing. Yeah, that's what it's called, I think. Um, just called me to confirm the amount I have to pay for the hospital, and it's not bad. Like, I, I'm not acting like this because it's bad. It's exactly what we were told it would be, but I guess talking to the hospital staff, it's sinking in now. Now that I've already done everything, now that this is already confirmed, now that I'm talking to the actual hospital staff, it wasn't real when I talked to the plastic surgeon and he put me in a surgical bra and had me trying on big, giant, fake bazungas. It wasn't real then. <laughs> now it feels real. Now I'm realizing that this is happening. This is wild. I'm fucking doing this, you guys. They're gonna cut me open. And they're gonna put the giant fake bazungas that I had in my shirt the other day inside my body. No, this isn't real. Someone's gonna gotta smack me and wake me up. This is fucking insane. I can't believe I'm doing this. I always say I'm gonna get vlog footage of things as they're happening. But once again, I did not vlog in the car or at my appointment like I said I was going to because I got a raging headache right before we left and it was bright. There's snow out again. It was so bright sitting in that car. And um, yeah, I was not, mm -mm, no, I wasn't feeling it. I was not gonna sit there and talk to my phone and be coherent while I was in the car because I had an awful headache. I can't take ibuprofen, acetaminophen, NSAIDs, basically any kind of painkiller. I can't take naproxen, none of it until after my surgery. I can't take anything like that before my surgery because it can thin your blood. So that means I am parking my ass in this bed and I am going to be sleeping this shit off. I am checking out. I am done. No more vlogging. No more my head hurts. Today is Thursday, February 22nd. My surgery is scheduled for sometime tomorrow, apparently. I don't know how to feel about it. Like, it seems so unreal to me. I'm also pretty anxious still. I'm not afraid of, like, the surgeon messing anything up. I'm, I'm scared that I'm gonna, like, die from the anesthesia and that I'm just gonna go to sleep and never wake up again and... Yeah, I guess that's a pretty common fear to have though when it comes to surgery, but I am a little freaked out. Obviously, I'm sure that's not gonna happen. No one in my family has a history of having a reaction to anesthetics. I've been put under before to have my wisdom teeth taken out and I did just fine. I was also put under when I was an infant and I had this uh, tumor removed from between my eyes. I think it'll be okay. Anyways, I had said that I was gonna pack my hospital bag and show you guys what I took with me because a lot of people that are watching my videos are people that are also getting ready to have breast implants or top surgery for my friends that are transitioning and so I want to make sure that I make this as informative as possible. The other thing I did, if you color your hair, it's important to do a touch-up right before your surgery. I mean not right before, right before, but like within a couple days of your surgery because if you use direct dyes like I do, the dye will rinse out of your hair forever, first of all. And it fades really funky, like my roots start turning green, which they were already doing. I <laughs> will not be able to dye my hair until my incisions are completely closed up. And so I made sure that I got my roots touched up. I got the spots in my hair that were starting to turn more to the purple and blue undertones from the Arctic Fox Transylvania dye that I've been using. So I touched this up yesterday. That's two days before my surgery, and then from now on, when I shower, I'm gonna have to wear a shower cap and wash my hair over my sink so that the dye doesn't run out onto the incisions or stain the tape and then get into my incision, all of that. So if you dye your hair, that's something to keep in mind. You don't want the dye, if you use direct dye, to rinse over your incision at all until it's completely closed up. You'll be washing your head in the sink or just using dry shampoo for a couple weeks if that's more your thing, if you can handle it. So the other thing to know is that when you go in for surgery, they're gonna ask you to take out all the piercings that you have, all the piercings you have. Luckily, my lip rings have already closed up because I've been considering getting a vertical and my mouth is kind of narrow. I can't fit all three on my mouth, so. 
my lip rings have already healed up. I've already taken my earrings out. I'll be leaving them out until after my surgery is complete. And then I'll be taking my belly ring out before we go or once we're at the hospital, whatever. Without further ado, let's look in my backpack so I can show you guys what I'm bringing with me to the hospital. First of all, this is the bag that I'm bringing. This is actually a diaper bag that my husband got, but we don't use it very often. First thing I'm bringing is my old wallet, which I've had since I was 14 years old and I really need a new one, hey? Obviously, if you're getting ready to do the same thing, make sure you have whatever card you're paying with, paying with ID and then extra money so that you can eat afterwards. And we are bringing $70 for food because I'm gonna be so hungry. And then I also stuck in here my surgical soap, which I, whoo, actually, my surgical soap, which I actually won't need to take with me. This is Dynahex for a soap that I have to use the night before and then the morning before my surgery. So I put it in my backpack so I don't lose it anywhere. And it's going to go right back in the backpack too, along with my wallet. I packed some peanut butter clip bars for me in the car after surgery, obviously. And then I packed my husband some blueberry cliff bars. These are his favorite for on the way to my surgery. So the next thing that's in here is my envelope of paperwork. If you are planning on having a surgical procedure done, I suggest you bring this with you because they're going to have you fill out paperwork and you're going to have to bring copies home for your personal records. So I saved my envelope from my first consultation appointment when they gave me some informational booklets, which I can actually show you a couple of them. Um, here is part of the study that my lovely plastic surgeon printed out for me to make sure that I was making an informed decision and that I had this shit on record. And then the, this is the quote right there. I am taking that with me as well in case we have any questions about the billing, I can show them the quote that I was given. I don't think we'll have any issues though. And then my breast augmentation booklet with information on like recovery and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna be taking that with me. Any paperwork pertaining to the surgery will be going in here so I don't have to fumble around with it in my backpack. The next thing I brought, I'm sure you guys are gonna love because we'll obviously be bringing phone chargers and our phones for entertainment, but if my phone starts dying and I have to plug it in somewhere, I figured this would be a good way to keep ourselves entertained while we're in the hospital. It is a hospital. I think they have their own suite for their surgeries, so I don't think we'll be around a lot of people, but even if we are, we can keep quiet. Obviously, we won't be actually playing the game, but instead just drawing some random cards and seeing what we get and giggling to ourselves like a bunch of fourth graders. It'll be a good time. We'll have fun, and it'll keep me distracted from how hungry I imagine I'm gonna be. The next thing that I brought, I'll pull these out. I'm gonna show those to you guys. I brought two giant enormous sandwich bags of goldfish again for my husband in the car or me after my surgery, whoever gets to them first. Now I'm going to show you guys what I'm packing for clothes because they say to wear comfortable clothes but I know myself there is a good chance that I'm not going to want to wear the same outfit when I come out of surgery because I'm weird about putting on dirty clothes. So I packed myself some underwear, an extra pair just because I'm weird and then I'm actually only bringing one pair of leggings because they are super comfy and they have this cute thing on the bottom. Do you see that? I got these for $27 at, what's that place called? Vanity. The brand is Liv and Piper. It's L-I-V. They're adorable, aren't they? I love them. These are my favorite, one of my favorite pairs of yoga pants. So I will be wearing these tomorrow, but I'm putting them in my backpack anyways, just so everything's ready in the morning. And then I am bringing this old shirt. I got this from my foster sister, Sierra. Hi, Sierra. I love you. You're watching this. It's super comfy. I love it. I wear this all the time. I'm pretty sure this is what I wore to get my wisdom teeth out too. So this is just really loose and thin and it doesn't have any weight to it. So it'll be really comfortable. I'm not going to put any pressure or anything on my chest immediately after surgery. And then I packed another shirt of the same style, probably to wear on the way there because this one is a little bit more tight, but they're basically, basically the same. And then for a sweater, cause I mostly have hoodies, but I don't envision myself wanting to put my arms up over my head. That's probably gonna be uncomfortable. I did not want to pack a hoodie, but it's also like nine degrees out lately. So I needed to wear at least something to just cover my arms a little bit while I'm getting from the car into the hospital. So I am bringing this. My friend left this at my house forever ago 
and has just never picked it up. It's just been living here. Lillian, if you're watching this, your sweater is still at my house. <laughs> it's been here for a year. I will be wearing this. Now there's gonna be memories in it for you, Lillian, when you eventually come get your sweater. This is the sweater that my boobs will be transforming in. It's gonna be beautiful. And then when you have it, you can always remember that my new titties were in it. So it's just thin, it's comfortable, it's like, it had like a strange width to it where you don't have to like reach around awkwardly to put your arm in it. It just kind of like flows onto your body. There's no struggle involved. And since my tits are gonna be sore as hell, I'm not gonna wanna be like trying to finagle myself into anything. Especially not a hoodie because most of mine are really tight. So that's what I'm packing for clothes. If you are planning on having a breast augmentation, I highly, highly, highly suggest you take my advice. My mother actually had a breast reduction a few years ago. And this is basically the kind of stuff she took with her to have that done. Well, not all the food and stuff because hers was really early in the morning. But yeah, this is, this is basically what I would recommend for you guys if you're having a breast augmentation, some stuff to entertain yourself, some stuff to uh, keep busy, that kind of thing. I will be updating you guys throughout the day on what I'm doing, how things are going, and I will be vlogging in the car on the way there. I will see you guys in a little bit. Hey guys, I am up in my studio for a minute. It is like five o'clock in the afternoon and I've been cleaning the house, scrubbing the bathrooms, getting caught up on laundry, washing my sheets because I have to use my surgical soap tonight and they said to sleep in clean clothes and clean sheets. Everything has to be completely clean after using that stuff, obviously. So I'm getting everything like prepped. So I'm all caught up on everything and I won't have to worry about like laundry and crap like that when I come back from the hospital. And then my mother will be here with the kids tomorrow and she is gonna help with some stuff that I won't be able to do because the house gets messy every single day. Like every day it's a mess because kids. She's gonna help me keep caught up on everything. Tomorrow's gonna be interesting. I just finished my dinner and I'm getting ready in just a minute. I have to pick up my house a little bit more and then I'm gonna get ready to get in the shower and use my chlorhexidine my surgical wash, whatevs, whatever it's called. I am getting ready to use my surgical wash. I'll let you guys know how that goes. Tell you if it's the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life or not, since I know a lot of you are interested in this procedure as well. And then I believe the wash you're supposed to use on your whole body, like everywhere below your neck. I think, I think that's what you're supposed to do. We'll see. I've scrubbed myself. A couple observations I made. This dumps out like water. It's impossible to tell how much you got on your loofah, which I had to use a brand new loofah, by the way, so as not to contaminate the soap. So I'm trying to dump this on my brand new loofah. It's dumping out like water. I don't even know if I used half the bottle. I could have used more than half the bottle for all I know. It was just dumping out like water and not lathering because apparently it takes a while to suds up and I was trying to scrub my arm and all of a sudden it suds up a lot. And it flung some soap in my mouth, which you're specifically not supposed to get in your mouth. And it tasted really bad. Also, I found that the hospital smell is this soap. All hospitals smell like this soap. And now my whole house smells like a hospital. So that's my review on surgical soap. Guys, I'm currently laying on my couch. It's 7 a.m. My check-in time is at 10.45, so we won't be leaving till 10. But I have... A outrageous headache this morning and I can barely see so I have to get up and go find my uh, corrective lenses and see if that'll help and wear my glasses for a little bit because I can't take anything surgeon it's literally the next state over I said that in my last video it feels really weird to be going to a doctor in a different state we're like 20 minutes away though so I think this is the only update I'm gonna do right now because there's nothing to record on I'm in the car that's all but I'm gonna get some footage on the way back home when I'm all moved up so you can laugh at me
guys, I'm gonna be going back here soon. I have my IV in. I got this fancy like heated blanket that blows hot air on me. So my IV took a couple tries, but that's pretty standard because I'm such a small person and I'm so cold I'm small man. So I will update you guys when I'm out. I should be meeting with my surgeon and anesthesiologist in just a minute. Hey guys, it's 4.24 p.m. now. We are just leaving the hospital. Ignore all this acne on my face. Is that even acne? That is something on my face, I think. Um, we're leaving the hospital right now, though. My tits hurt. I feel like I got hit by a bus. And I'm also high as shit on pain meds, so... Oh, ow. I'm so sorry. There's bumps on the road and stuff that are killing me. I got all sorts of discharge information that I can't remember because I was all looped up. But they did a really good job, at least, with keeping me comfortable. They knew I have anxiety, so they gave me something to kind of make me feel really drunk before they put me to sleep. And the stuff that they gave me was strong enough that it put me to sleep before they gave me anesthetics, which was nice. So I didn't have, like, the weird mini panic attack as I was getting put under. It felt like it only took 15 minutes, but it's already 4.30, and I need to eat something really bad. So. This is where we're at right now. I don't know what this lump is. I'm hoping it's not my nipple, but who knows anymore. This is just part of the bra. Do I say hi, honey? Hi! So yeah, we're going to get some food and then go home and I'll update you guys on how I feel in the morning. Hey guys, I know this is really dark and like grainy looking. It's the day after and I wanted to update you guys on some stuff. First of all, my incisions were under here. But for some reason, my sternum hurts the most. And I'm not entirely sure why. My, my chest is pretty swollen, but I can still feel my collarbone, which is good. I'm having so much soreness, though. And they prescribed me all manner of medications to deal with pain and that kind of thing. And then they gave me a nausea medication. Wrong side, it's over here. It's this sticker that they put on me before I went back for surgery. And it lasts 72 hours, so I'm leaving it on as long as I can. Um, and then they let my alpaca come with me. And they took him away right before I went back for surgery. His name is Fruit. He's like my companion animal because I can't have an actual service animal for my anxiety. So this is my, my therapy llama. He goes places with me when I'm like under a lot of stress. He's a good little alpaca. So yeah, they let him come with me. They had the most high-tech stuff there. It was unreal. I'm gonna talk more about that in a different video. Getting up right now hurts so bad because you're not supposed to push or pull anything. And so I've been having a really hard time getting up because I have to use my elbows to like push myself up and it hurts so bad. If my husband tries to help me up, he has to pull from under my armpit and I can feel it tugging at the incision. So it takes me like, 20 minutes to get up out of bed but walking around and stuff hurts so bad i'm basically bedridden for a while so i'm gonna be doing movie marathons today and tomorrow and then the next day hopefully i'll be feeling better and my best friend rachel is gonna come hang out and help me with the kids because i can't lift like anything so yeah that is the morning after so far for anyone because i know a lot of people on my facebook and like YouTube followers and stuff like that. You guys all have been expressing interest in getting your boobs done. So I'm gonna show you guys this. This is my surgical bra. It's on hella crooked because this boob is more swollen than this boob. But yeah, this is the bra they gave me. My doctor actually gave this to me for free. He paid for this and he also paid for my blood tests and my um, pregnancy tests. Like he paid all my labs for me. And then he brought me this, which is like a silky surgical bra, you know, little hooks are in the front. 
And then this is a compression band. I believe this is to keep the implants in the exact spot they need to be. This keeps them from migrating upwards or anything like that. So I have to leave this on most of the day today. And I'm sure I can take it off like to take a break from having it on because it does hurt really bad having it on. But I will put it back on. I'm going to try to wear this every day as long as I can. And the swelling is pretty bad. Like I can feel my boob in there and it just feels like a rock. And a large portion of my boob is actually numb, probably from the incision. So yeah, that's just how I'm feeling today. I'm going to do another update once I'm feeling a little bit better. And I can go use my studio lights because I hate recording like this. Um, I'm going to explain to you guys everything that happened at the hospital and all of those details. Because it was really fancy. Like, they had some fancy stuff going on. And they took really good care of me. They kept me, like, excruciatingly comfortable. Now that it's all over with, I don't have the anxiety about it anymore, so I'm realizing now, like, what a good experience it was. And I knew at the time that I was having, like, a good experience. It's just the anxiety gets to me, so. I will update you guys when I'm feeling a little bit better and I get some makeup on my face to feel a little bit better about myself right now. And then I will make a video for you guys. And if you are interested, I always link my social media in the description box. Um, YouTube has rules against nudity, obviously. And I don't post uncensored photos anyways, but I don't want to risk getting in trouble with YouTube. I am gonna go ahead and post lots of before and after photos on Facebook. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. More updates really soon once I'm not in so much pain. Oh no, my water. Oh, I can't reach it now. Okay, guys, I have to message my husband to have him come get my water out from between the bed and the wall. Because I can't, like, move properly.